Hello, and welcome back to our series on cloud native application development, and specifically our Tecton track. So in a previous video, which I'll link in the description below, we talked about Tecton tasks. Tecton tasks are a single unit of work inside of Tecton, but generally you wanna run a series of tasks in a specific order, uh, a workflow of sorts, and that's known as a Tecton pipeline. And we'll be talking about how to create that pipeline out of a series of tasks today. Now, before I started this video, I went ahead and installed a couple things on my OpenShift cluster. I created a namespace called Pipeline Example. I installed the OpenShift uh, Pipelines Operator. And then I put a series of tasks on the Pipeline Example namespace as well that you can see here. Um, real quick, by default, when you install the OpenShift Pipelines Operator, it does come with a bunch of different cluster tasks, which can be used right out of the box and are great starting points for creating your own task. Uh, but for this demo, I wanted to create slightly simpler tasks that are here. Also, if you want access to the task, there's a written lab that goes with this uh, video, and I'll include a link to that written lab below. Or if you don't wanna do the written lab, I'll also include a link to a repo with the example project in it, and you can find these tasks under infra pipeline tasks inside of that example repo. Now, real quick, let's just run through the tasks that we have uh, created as part of this demo. So our first task that we're gonna look at is the get clone task, which is just gonna clone our get repository. Uh, the next task that I wanna point out is the maven build task which will take our cloned repo and it'll run a maven com command on it to build a jar file and then our build and push to openshift registry will take that jar file create a container image and push that container image into the internal openshift registry so that we have access to it um, the final two tasks that i want to talk about is the Helm deploy task, which deploys our Kubernetes infrastructure, our deployment, our service, and our route, so that we actually can take that image, um, create a pod out of it, and then access that pod through the networking. And conditional task is just a task that I'm gonna to use to show one of the pieces of functionality of the Tecton pipeline near the end of the demo. So let's go ahead and create the pipeline. Now, I mentioned that there was a written demo, and the written demo will actually create this pipeline purely through YAML. So if that interests you more, I feel free to follow along with that written demo. In this video, I'm going to create that exact same pipeline, but I'm going to do it primarily through the UI, because I do think that the UI inside of OpenShift is, is pretty handy for creating that pipeline. So I'm going to click Create. I'm going to click Pipeline. You can see here I start with a new pipeline. I'm gonna call my pipeline example pipeline. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a task here. And I want the get clone task. So this is the task that I created and I'm gonna add that task. You can see that we've got a little missing parameters error here because this task expects some sort of input parameters. Right now, it's just expecting the repo URL. So let me go ahead and give it that repo URL by navigating to our get and grabbing our HTTPS URL from here. Um, you'll notice that it also expects a workspace. Workspaces are how we're able to, or at least one of the ways that we're able to pass data in between tasks, especially large sets of data, such as a cloned repository. Uh, a workspace is something that will be directly connected to a PVC, um, a persistent volume claim, and we can store information inside of that workspace. And then when we move to the next task, the pod that was used to run the previous task will be destroyed, but that PVC will remain consistent. There are also other uses of workspaces, such as you can connect it to a config map to give to pass in config information to your task. Um, and some other secrets and stuff like that. But the primary use is by connecting it to a PVC to give you persistence as you move from one task to another. So here, let's go ahead and just create a workspace. And you can just scroll down to where it says workspaces here, and we'll add a workspace, and we'll just call it, sure, we'll call it source repo. 
Uh, and now when we go back here, I can just click this drop down and say source repo is a workspace. And that's all we need for now. We'll specify how the workspace is tied in with a PVC once we actually run the pipeline. Uh, but you do want to connect the workspace with the task because theoretically you could have multiple workspaces used for different purposes. So we've cloned our repo. To start off with, let's just clone our repo and build our Java code. So let's create one more task. So I'm going to click a little plus arrow here, which will create the next task in the list. Note that I could click a plus arrow here to create a previous task if I wanted something to run before get clone, or if I wanted something to run in parallel with get clone, I could click the plus arrow below it. But for now, we just want something to run after we run our get clone task. So here, um, I believe I said we wanted to do the, the build, so we'll look up our Maven build task. And we'll add that, and that requires a Maven image, so this looks okay, and it requires the workspace that will have our now cloned code into it. So we'll just give it the source repo workspace. And for now, let's just save this, create it, and we'll run it and see what we end up with. Um, okay, so this pipeline, because there's a workspace, does require one parameter input. And that input is going to be that workspace. Now, there are a couple options here, config map and secret, uh, which we don't want. Uh, I could tie that workspace to a specific PVC, and I could go over here and create a, per, a persistent volume claim and use that. There is some downside to doing it that way, specifically that when you create a persistent volume claim, that persistent volume claim is associated with a specific node. So every single one of your pipeline tasks that run and use that persistent volume claim will have to use that specific node, which can clog that node up and can cause issues. Um, one of the cool things that Tekton has added is this volume claim template. Now this is gonna be dependent on your OpenShift cluster and if you have the correct storage classes, but if you're able to dynamically provision storage classes or you have a set of storage classes that work with this, the volume claim template will actually just create your PVC on the fly. And as long as there's a persistent volume that either exists that that PVC can claim, or you have a way of dynamically creating a persistent volume, then this Volume claim template is really kind of the way to go. And you can click down here and get more information. So I'm going to use a GP3 CSI, single read write, so only one person is able to read and write from that persistent volume claim. Um, but you can see that when I click Create here, we've got this volume claim template resource. It just creates this PVC for us. Uh, one quick note while this is running, this PVC, this PVC is associated with this pipeline run object. So you can see this is actually a pipeline run object that got created for us. And as long as this pipeline run object is created, this PVC will remain. If we ever delete this pipeline run object, the PVC will go away. Um, and the operator, the OpenShift pipelines operator, has ways in which you can delete these pipeline run objects periodically. Uh, and you should Definitely look into turning that on because if you start getting multiple developers all running pipeline runs, uh, you can end up with a ton of PVCs. And even though they're relatively small, you know, this one's only one gig, if you have tens or hundreds or thousands of runs a week, that can really start to add up. So we'll just wait for this pipeline to finish. and our clone task and our Maven build task worked. So if we click inside of task run, we can see that we've got our two tasks. There's a task run associated with them as well as a pod. And if I click inside of my Maven build, I can even look at the logs associated with that pod and see that we were able to successfully build our jar. Um, one good thing to note is that if you are doing debugging and there's an issue with a specific task, Sometimes the task information will have the information you need or the task run will have the information you need, but you can also look directly at the pipeline and you can look at the events 
uh, stream inside of the pipeline to see if there's issues like not able to mount the PVC or uh, some other image not found issue. Okay, so now that we've created sort of a basic pipeline that does two things, let's kind of expand this out into a fully functional pipeline that'll build our application, create our image, push our image, and then it'll also uh, set up all of our Kubernetes resources, something that you may use in uh, an initial uh, production environment. So I'm going to click Actions here and click Edit Pipeline. I'm going to add a couple more. So after we've built our jar file, we're going to want to uh, build that into an image. So build and push to OpenShift registry. So let's go ahead and add this one. Uh, you can see that this one takes a couple more. Uh, for the image name, we'll just call this example uh, deployment. The image tag will say, uh, actually for the image tag, what we're gonna do is we're going to make this image tag based on the result of this get clone task. So if we go back into our pipelines and we look at our pipeline runs, we look at our task run, and we look at our get clone task, you can see that there, that there is a result inside of our get clone task called commit. So let's make our image tag equal to the commit tag of our get. So here we're going to do this. And if you hit control space here, it'll actually give you a bunch of options. So here you can see this last option is just going to be tasks.getclonetasks.results.commit. And you just surround that by dollar sign open parentheses, close parentheses. But again, with the uh, with the UI, it's really cool because if you just do a control space, it'll give you all the possible options that you could take. And then uh, the workspace we need to set to source repo. Great, so that should be all we need there. And then at the same time, so a parallel task with our Maven build, we're going to create a new task called Helm Deploy. And this will deploy uh, our, our different pieces of the application. So it's gonna need an image name. We're gonna to need to make sure that matches up. So example deployment will be our image name. Our image tag will need to be the result of get clone. And then all these other defaults should be good to go. And then we give it the same workspace, the source repo workspace. Um, so all of this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. There is a little bit of weirdness, and sometimes you get this with the UI where it doesn't, the lines don't connect exactly like I want to. Uh, to fix this is pretty simple. This is all gonna be based in a run after key inside of our task spec. So you can see this is what the pipeline YAML actually looks like. We've got tasks and we've got a list of tasks. And some of these tasks will have run after. So this says run after get clone for the Maven build task, which is what we want. Um, but our build and push to OpenShift registry has run after Maven build, get clone and Helm deploy. Really all we care about here is that it runs after the Maven build. And then we want to make sure our Helm deploy just runs after the get clone task here. So sometimes you'll have to clean up this run after even through the UI. But if I click save here and I go to the details, it should look something like this. So we do our clone and then we do the Maven build and the pushing into the OpenShift registry at the same time that we do our Helm deploy. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure it works. And we're just going to do the same thing we did last time with a volume claim template. While this is running, one minor gotcha I do want to point out is it looks like the Maven build task and the Helm deploy task are running in parallel, which would be true 
But since both of them are using this volume claim template and the same persistent volume claim, we're not going to be able to mount those to both pods at the same time. So you can see here Helm deploy finished first. Um, but while the Helm deploy was running, the Maven build wasn't able to be running at the same time because it's dependent on that same PVC. There are ways to work around it depending on how um, important speed is to you during the run, but it does add some complexity. So we've now had our Maven build and our Helm deploy run successfully. Um, we can look at those in our task run. With the Helm deploy, we should have deployed something inside of our deployments, an example deploy here. But you can see if we go inside of the pod, we're getting an image pullback off error because it's not able to find that image, which is just the default image that we put in there. Or it's the example deployment and then it's the um, commit tag that we had mentioned before. And that's because that image doesn't yet exist. Uh, but once our pipeline completes and our push to the OpenShift registry runs, then it should push that image into our image stream, which we can see here inside of this tag. And we can see now that we've actually pushed our image into this image stream now that our pipeline has successfully run. So our pipeline is completed. Our image stream now has two tags pushed into it. Um, and that's just based on the task, which is the commit ID that we had mentioned before. So 6AA3AE1. And then that one also pushes an image called latest every time that it runs. So if we go back to our workload here and go to our deployment, uh, we scale down, scale back up so that it tries to pull a new image. We should be able to successfully create our container. Great. And um, we should be able to hit our endpoint by navigating to network, routes, and then just hitting the route there. So this shows how we can do like a really basic deployment of a Java application through a Tecton pipeline pretty quickly. Uh, normally you would want to add tests and security scans and all that stuff. Um, but this is a good starting point for a pipeline. So the last thing that I kind of want to show off, uh, just because it is a pretty useful ability, is conditional task inside of Tecton. Uh, conditional task will let you run a task based on the output of another task or based on user parameter input um, or a multitude of different things. So it can be really useful to know whether or not you want to deploy something to one environment or the other, or if you want to tag something based on um, a get commit versus a get tag or whatever, you can do that through conditional task. So to create our conditional task, we're just going to come back here. We're going to edit our pipeline. We're actually going to add a parameter. Um, and the parameter's name is just going to be uh, run conditional. And so the parameters here are actually going to be parameters that are going to get input when we start running the task, something else that you'll show uh, or that you'll see in just a minute. And then um, we can leave we can leave the rest. We'll, we'll make the default false. We can leave the rest as is. And then we're going to add one more task to get clone. Uh, well, actually, let's that is a parallel task here. And that task is going to be called conditional task. Click add. And we're going to go and add a win expression here. So I'm going to add a win expression that says win, and I'll control space, params.run conditional equals true. So the operator is in true. So that means if a user puts true in for run conditional, then the conditional task should run. Otherwise, it shouldn't run. And then I will save that. And we know it's a conditional task because we've got this little diamond here. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to start two pipelines simultaneously, one with it being true, one with it not being true. 
and that way we can kind of see what happens. So start, we'll do another volume claim template. Here we'll make our run condition false. And here we'll make our run condition true. And we'll start both of them. So here you can see that on the left where we set it to false, our conditional tasks did not run, which is what these two little arrows mean. And on the right, it did run. So it's just a cool feature to keep in mind when you're developing your own pipelines. Um, Tecton pipelines have a lot of other really cool features that I encourage everyone to explore on their own. Um, one of the features that we'll be talking about in the future video are uh, Tecton triggers, which will allow us to take some sort of external service such as a GitHub or a GitLab server and trigger a Tecton pipeline remotely. Um, but there will be a lot of things that I just am not going to have time to cover. Uh, finally, task is one that I mentioned inside of the written lab, and that would be a, a cool one for you to take and try on your own. But I really hope you found this useful, and uh, I hope to see you again in the next video.